So do they really get jump? Yeah. <laughs> Will you go get me a snake? What? Get me a king snake. Get a map. I'm on, on Google Hangouts Live, so if anybody starts, if anybody comes to view us, I'm gonna talk to them about snakes. All right. No viewers yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pretend like we had a lot of <laughs> yeah. Talking to the camera. <laughs> I'm the viewer. You are? Yeah, I'm viewing myself. No, it says. Now it goes back to one viewer. Um. Who's, whoever's out there, will you, you type? Let me know your name, please. Hello. Waiting for a few more folks to join in, and then we'll get started talking about snake scales. I don't know if you guys can hear me. If you can, um, if you can't hear me, let me know, and we'll have to 
potentially do this again later. Um, at a reptile expo where we're, we have a bunch of our, our teachers, our, our snakes, who are um, helping educate people about what they're taking home before they get it home. And so they know how how to handle it, how to take care of it, um, and just overall have a good experience with their snake. So feel free to ask any questions right now if you if you if you if you'd like to. Um, I'll keep looking at my computer here and see what if I can um, see your question and answer it. Here's our um, educational folks doing their, doing their job. Those are our volunteers who are doing a great job of um, making sure that people can see snakes, see what lives around here in Colorado, and see some things in different parts of the world, such as this desert king snake in the southwest. scales and some of them are, are cooler than others and some of them are quite fascinating. I'm trying to learn how to use the um, this whole Google. Trying to learn learn how to use this whole Google Hangouts thing. Um, the Desert King Snake here, which is, is a pretty cool snake from the Southwest. They love to eat rattlesnakes. Um, one of their one thing that's really cool about them is if you take water that the snake's been soaking in and, and, and spray spray it at a rattlesnake, the rattlesnake will instantly bridge its body up off the ground like this. And then, so this king snake can't get to where its head is and, and try and um, eat it, which the king snake eventually will figure out how to eat it. The so snake tries to defend itself that way, slapping itself, um, going off the, holding its body like off the ground, and that's just when you spray water from the uh, king snake soaked in. So just think what the reaction would be if it was an actual king snake. <laughs> You go, will you bring me a, a bull snake if there's one available? I'm going to switch snakes now to bull snake, which has rough scales. Just take, take a look at it. If you look, um, here we are. People are visiting our snakes, our teachers, and just learning a little bit about them. It's quite fascinating. But, uh, really get, let people know how how little they know about snakes, even though they're taking one home, but we can really help them um, understand a little bit more about them. This is the bull snake. Bull snakes are very common in a lot of their range, but they're also a species of concern because as soon as this, this human traffic on roads increases, um, bull snakes have a huge home range. They, they travel all over, and eventually they come across a road, and there's a lot of traffic. Bull snakes actually slow down as they cross roads. A lot of them are killed as they um, on roads. If you look closely here, I'm going to show you. Right. 
here on the on the scales of the bull snake. Yep, you can see how they have a keel going down them, and that's a rough scale. It's a different type of scale that we have, and some snakes have smooth scales. So if you look, let's just get a little bit better focus there. Each scale has a line down it, and it's actually a keel that makes it feel rough. And that helps with actually bull snakes in a lot of different ways. Um, they're constrictors, and a lot of times they're underground. And a keel like that can help them move through a, um, as they crawl, it helps them move through rodent burrows a little bit faster, especially where there's places where it's constricted. And then they they can catch their prey. Um, helps them in that sandy, that sandy environment of being underground. Bull snakes also have a really cool adaptation. So if you look at this guy's nose, he's been rubbing it. But they have a pointy, uh, it's focused on me, not the, not here. Let's see. Well, you can kind of see how it has a pointy head. There we go. And that pointy head helps it push into the soil. And actually, if you watch a bull snake, they'll push into the soil, and they'll turn their head sideways and pull back, just like you're digging. Um, and it, it really is digging. It's true digging. They push their point, pointy nose, their arrow pointed nose, into the soil, kink it sideways, Take it sideways and pull back soil and just keep digging until they get into the rodent burrow, and then they'll, they'll just follow that along until they find the find the rodent um, and eat it. Uh, they're really good. They're one of the best snakes out there for, for rodent controls. They eat a lot of them. They grow fast and they get big. Little snake skin gets up eight feet long. Most average five to six feet long would be a six footer would be a big one, really big one, but they can get to eight feet. So this is just a. Um, example of, of, of snake with rough scales and a good example of one of the best mousers in the world. Better than any cat or any um, any raptor out there. Can you hand me that gray band? Thank you. Let me take this one. I have a different snake here. This is a great banded king snake. Now, they're from southwest Texas in Mexico. And they're, they're just beautiful, beautiful snakes. A lot of people collected them for the pet trade. There's all sorts of different varieties of them. Um, the bandwidths are different. The colors are a bit different. But we're going to look really closely at this guy's scales. Getting you sick here. We'll look closely at the scales of, of, of a of a um, gray banded king snake, and you'll notice. Get it, get it in focus here. Making you seasick, I see. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. There we go. And as you can see, these snakes don't have that keel. They're smooth. And you can see the skin between each scale, and that's because this snake is a little bit overweight. Um, but you can see those smooth scales. And smooth scales, on a, like a, such as a gray banded king snake, just help reduce friction as they're moving. They're a little bit faster um, on the ground. And also, they're, they'll go deep. They eat rodents. They eat other snakes. Um, and a lot of lizards. They're... Um, Just overall, pretty pretty cool snakes. The they're nocturnal. They come out at night, and that's why that's how most people find these snakes. Is they're um, if I get a little bit better focus here, they they drive roads. And now in Texas, actually, it's not legal to drive roads to look for snakes. Um, so hopefully the, the gray banded king snakes will have a little better better success on surviving and not being collected by people. Now, if you want to go out and collect a snake for for a pet. Um, just make sure it's not a protected snake, and understand that there are in your state there are a lot of protected snakes, and a lot of states regulate what snakes you can keep. You can keep. Colorado is one of them. There's only five species of wild snake that you can keep at home, um, out of the 26 or so species that we have in, in in our state. And every state's different like that. For example, Georgia, you can't have a non-venomous snake. You're allowed to have a venomous snake. Um, kind of a strange, strange law, but it's just the way that um, it, it's written. So, 
Snakes, if you, if you I, I really need to learn here. I'm going to just Google the Hangouts thing. It's quite new to us. So we're really going to learn how to, how to get focused, and maybe we just need to find a, a different way of focusing. But I was going to show you the different scales on the head of a snake. Okay, so as you can see, snakes have quite a few different scales on top of their head. Each one has a name. Oh, let's see here. Come on, focus. I'm going to have to learn how to focus this thing, aren't I? Probably is a manual focus somewhere that... Um, I'm going to have to learn. But if you look at each one of these the scales on its head, they're they're different. And notice they're large scales. Now, snakes like boas and pythons have really small scales on their head, and that's kind of a primitive characteristic. As, as snakes like the colubrids, they have different large scales. And the ones on their nose are called their, their rostral scales, and then there's the nasal scales, the internasals, the parietals, the interparietals, and all those different things, the labials, all those different scales you can use to identify snakes. Huh? Well, I'm going to just wrap this up here. This is kind of a learning thing, so um, we're going to get back to our, our educational booth. There's Kevin, one of our Brother Center's board members, who's doing a great job here educating folks. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna head out here, and we'll do this again. We'll, we'll get back on here, and I'll let you guys know when, when our next live broadcast featuring snakes is going to be. Thank you.